And welcome to something else. Uh, let me take just a minute to introduce the people who are here, uh, our guys. Uh, first of all, you know Edward Thackeray III. He's my personal valet and announcer. Can we have a little round of applause? That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. He's a servant. Um, Al is from the station. The station uh, sent him down. He's, he's, he's our censor. Does everybody know what a censor is? He's our, he's our judge of good taste. He makes sure that we don't do anything that might be considered in bad taste, and they sent him down to decide what's in good yes, and what's in... I'll be in here all the time looking, looking to see that you do everything right. Man. I'll do everything right, and you what's just... What's the thing do... with the sweater? I don't like that. The producer That's wanted me to do this. Take she it said, off. It's no good. Take I it can't. Off. The producer said... Is oh. the censor higher than a producer? Oh, ten times higher. Oh, fine. Yeah. Here. Yeah. It's yours. Take it oh, home. Gee, Wear thanks. it. Wear thanks. it. Thanks. Go on a boat trip I'll somewhere. Put my feet on it. Um, the gorilla cam. Do not be alarmed if a pink gorilla comes near anybody. It's, he's, a, he's a cameraman here on the show. And don't get excited. Just take the pictures. Don't scratch your head. That's my job. I have no idea what's going on. Uh, the band. I'm going to do a quick introduction of the band. The man in the white pants, which, by the way, are a little silly for a man your age. Oh, never mind. I didn't say that. Uh, Larry Walker. He prefers... <laughs> Sometimes he likes to be called Lawrence. I don't know why. Uh, in the center... Hi, Lawrence. In the center, we have John Noseworthy. He plays keyboards. And uh, he plays keyboards and wishes he were taller. And on that guitar, we have Mike Dimitri, the leader of the boys. On the show today... That's enough for the band. On the show today, we have an interview with Buck Rogers of the Montreal Expos. And behind door number one, the door to nowhere, we have a very special guest, and I'm going to bring him out right now. A hush came over the crowd because we think they may know who it is. Let's see if it is Jeremy Miller from Growing Pains. How you doing? Do you want to? you want to meet some girls? Sure. Just a sec. Don't go yet. We better, I'll just do a quick little test and see if there are any girls in the front row who would like to meet you. Because some of them are sitting by Al, and maybe his personal magnetism has, has overtaken you. But any girls in the front row want to meet Jeremy? little handshake. There's one. Okay. little handshake from Jeremy Miller of Growing Pains. This one's in awe. I think she'd like to, but she's in awe. I said girls in the front row, Al. Now cut it out. I there's, know a gorilla. There's a couple over there. Just do it quickly, and then we'll rendezvous on the couch. They're starstruck. Have a seat right there. Have a seat. Just and, uh, a minute. Oh, well, he's not stepping right. on the black. We have a rule here. It's Thackeray's rule. Have a seat right there, and I'll be right with you. Uh, Thackeray has... You're stepping on the black, you great fool. Get off it. Oh, botheration. <laughs> At least he said great. Thank you. Uh, it, Thackeray finds the black carpet hard to clean, and he would like us to keep... I'm sorry, I, I didn't... Ah. Um, I'm, I apologize okay. for, Thack okay. for Thackeray. So how's it going? It's doing pretty good. It's been relaxing lately. Relaxing? You're, you're tired, I know, because it was a long trip to Funtown, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. I'm going to do something. Do you read the teen magazines? Yeah, pretty much. So you know what they're saying about you? Um, depends which article is. No, it's have. not bad. It's not bad. There's an article in this one. It's, it's called Tutti Frutti. I hope they don't mind me saying oh. that, but they probably don't. Did you read this? Uh, is that the Tattletales issue? Yeah. Okay, yes, and I read that. Um, it's Me and what Tracy were Tracy Gold said other. about you. Uh oh. Is it true? Did you you read this? Let me ask you yes, a couple of questions of what she said about you. You play practical jokes. Love it. I do it all the time. You love doing practical jokes? Me and Kirk have a war going on, or did. And 
We used to like Vaseline each other's to toilet seats and put water balloons on top of each other's doors and fill the garbage cans with water and set them up against the door. Does everybody ask Kirk Cameron what it's like to work with Jeremy Miller? No. <laughs> Get out. They do no. so, don't they? I, I don't know. No? What's it, what's it like with the cast? Are you all friends or is it like Pretty a, much. A We've all got a really good, really good relationship. So you do hang out when you're off the set or are you too busy? Uh, come, on, come on up, Ruf. Let me just get Rufus up here and we'll... So tell me, tell me your relationship with the other people on the cast. Well, we're all like one big family since we work together for so long. And so we work together um, all the time. And we're just re really like just one big family. It's like a second family to me. So does Alan Thicke sometimes think he's your real dad and offer advice on life? Mm, every once in a while, yeah. Does that become a problem at home when you go home and you're real dad and, and nah. th they don't get in conflicts? Because sometimes I don't take Alan's advice because he's just joking around. Oh, he's just, he's just making it up. Mm -hmm. Do you have any highlights that you remember you really liked on Growing Pains? Oh, uh, let me see. The one I remember was the Swedish volleyball team, but I don't think yeah. we can talk about that. Um, Al, I don't think we can talk about the Swedish volleyball team, can we? Uh, just a minute, I'll check on it. says here, Swedish? Swedish? Swedish. No, Swedish. Uh, Were they Swedish? No, Swedish I checked my book here. It says uh, that is not allowed to be discussed talk on television about, about Swedish okay. uh, basketball. But you volleyball. seem to be having a good time on that Whatever. show. Oh, I was having a blast. I made a couple friends with some of the girls who were talking and stuff. and I, I made a lot of friends on that trip, actually. And that was a cruise, so you got to go on a cruise. Yeah. Now, what's a day like for Jeremy Miller? It's, everybody thinks it's, it's glitter and glamour and fun and excitement. Not really. No? Um, I have to wake up at... 7 o'clock, get dressed, get usually to the studio by 9 o'clock, work until about 6, do school within those hours, work within those hours, eat lunch, and go home. What grade are you in? Seventh. Are you a good student or a bad student or a mediocre student, or do you not want to talk about it? I'm a pretty good student. I got a B average. A B average? Now, do you have to take home report cards and show them to your parents and stuff? Uh, usually my... Uh, See, I'm with a tutor most of the time, mm -hmm. so my tutor, my tutor makes up those uh, report cards and stuff. So you just sweet talk the tutor and you always get a nice report card? No. No. Doesn't work that way. Mm -mm. See, most people would think you don't even have to go to school. You got the life of Riley out there in Hollywood, but you're a normal guy, right? Yeah, pretty much. We're going to come right back and talk some more with Jeremy Miller. <laughs> an encore it meant a little compliment and um uh, tracy says jeremy eats everything that makes me sick the child loves food he loves junk food and gross things like peanut butter oh, now yeah, yeah, yeah. well he loves it tracy says it's gross so uh, I love it. I love you love peanut butter i like peanut butter and jelly on a burger and she called you a child did you did you? Are you sick? Are you a sick little boy? I guess hey, I guess on. they don't like that. Hey, I've got a friend who likes caviar and sour cream burgers. Yeah, that's even worse. You boy. don't like caviar and sour cream burgers. I don't like caviar. What's this thing you have about Sylvester Stallone? You want to do a movie with Stallone? Yes, I've always liked his movie. That's always the kind of movie I've always liked, and he's my idol. He's great. So. You want to do an action adventure movie? Definitely. Something like Rambo or Rocky or something. Be his kid in Ro Rambo. Well, well, you like Stallone, do you? Uh huh. He he's a, he likes Stallone, and you were a cartoon voice. For yes, a while. I, I used to be Linus actually. Linus. For um, I think it was like a year and a half, two years. I got to do the voice of Linus. Then my voice got deeper, and they kicked me off. That's one of the problems with being a child cartoon voice, that your voice changes and suddenly you're too old to do the voice. Right. 
happened to you and it's happened to others. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to take a question from the studio audience? Sure. Okay, it won't be your favorite food because we know that, I guess. Uh, question Thackeray from the studio audience. Yes, a question right here. Here you are, ma'am. Do you have any girlfriends? Uh, well, that's, she didn't say do you have a girlfriend. Do you have any girlfriends? So how many do you have and what are their names? I do not... <laughs> oh, no. I do not have a steady girlfriend right now. I mean, I do have friends that are girls. You can classify that as girlfriends. But I'm not going steady with anybody right now. That's there you are. You're in luck. Do you do um, a lot? You, you're in the teen magazines a lot. Mm. Do you find some of the questions they ask silly? Mm -hmm. Probably not as silly as mine, but do you, do you get embarrassed when they ask you like that? Not really. No. Hey, Stan. It's something you're used to. Hey, Stan, it's time for the band to do some music. Okay, well, right? I'm not quite finished chatting, but. Well, I thought maybe I could get in and maybe play it, some What songs. do you want to be when you grow up? If you, are you going to be an actor or do you want to do something else? I'm pretty much going to stay with acting and singing. You really like it when yeah. you grow up. So the band has anyway. some ideas of what they'd like to be when they grow up. I want to be the captain of a ship that sails the sea. I'll go around the world and make discoveries. When I grow up, that's what I'll be. When I grow up, I'm gonna have the biggest fire truck in all the land. Smokey the bear will want to shake my hand. I want to be a fireman. When we return, we will talk some more right now to Jeremy Miller. Do you know how quickly we cover on the this? The band was pretty good, but it's I think like they live need, I think TV. They need a and it's, you know, pardon? I did, the band was pretty good, but I think they need a drummer. You know? No, right. they don't need a drummer. That's the other thing about Al. He's a frustrated drummer, ah. and he wants to join the band. Well, I'm not he's very only here as as the censor. I just Do you have any work. musical talent yourself? Mm -hmm. I sing. I've been taking lessons since I was two. Really? Uh, yes. Did, have you sang on the show? Uh, not on the show, but I did a show at Knott's Berry Farm, and I did something in, uh, where was that? I did something in, uh... Somewhere. Do you want to sing? Pennsylvania. Do you want to sing on the show? And do they yes, know they do. it? Yes, they do. And why won't they let you, or will they? I don't know. Oh, we can't have him Well, sing. so there may be a chance that you will sing on yes. Growing Pains. There might be. There might be. How did you get to be on Growing Pains in the very first instance? In the very, well... You auditioned and got the job. Tell me when well, we come back, because now we really are taking a break. Ah. Keep it together, Stan. Keep it together, will you? Just like Michael Jackson on TV. Growing pains. Oh, ex excuse me. I hate to be a nuisance, but your feet are on the black carpet, ah. uh, and there's. It's. I know you're a guest, but Thackeray and Al have this thing where they don't want anyone on the black carpet. You a baseball fan? Did he yes. say he was on the black? Al, not now. Oh. Would. <laughs> <laughs> you're a baseball fan, right? Yes, I am. Here is an interview with Buck. Nice name for a grown-up. Rogers of the Montreal Expos. He's my favorite astronaut. <laughs> Uh, Buck, tell me first about your name. I, I'd like to know, how did you get the name Buck Rogers? Well, Buck was given to me by uh, my first major manager. Uh, he didn't know my name, so he just associated Rogers with Buck. He said, Buck, go warm up a pitcher. And from that day on, I was Buck, so it was nothing real fancy. It was, uh, you know, get off the bench and warm up a pitcher, Buck. So do you think you'll still be in baseball in the 21st century, like Buck Rogers? I doubt that very much. Uh, we've got a few more years, 11 more years to go. I may be, uh, I may be there for a while, but I, I, may, I may nudge into it. At the end of 1988, you said you were disappointed in the way the team finished. Now, what does a disappointed manager do? Well, he goes out and uh, makes a trade or tries to talk to his front office or talk his front office into making a trade for a shortstop, a starting pitcher, a 
uh, left-hand hitter like uh, Mike Aldretti, and uh, we take an awful good look at our uh, young players. So that's what basically he does. He's not happy with it. Is there a danger that the front office may say, yeah, it's time for a trade. Let's trade the manager? Oh, there's always that, always that chance. My job is in jeopardy uh, every day, so, uh, but I know that going in. All of us major league managers know it, and uh, we, we live with it. So baseball is not a real secure profession. Well, this will be my fifth year. I know there's a lot of people in uh, the corporate world that they would like to have five years in. Does it bother you when you see bad things in the papers or negative things written about the team and about you? Well, more so than when I, drink, when I read positive things, but uh, I know as a professional in, in the game of baseball that there's going to be, uh, uh, we're going to play bad and I expect to be written bad about. Uh, and we play good, we, we expect to be written good, good about. And any good reporter will write that way. It's when uh, there's personal negative things or, or opinion, negative opinions that uh, bother you sometimes. How do you deal with, uh, with rookies? They come to the training camp and they're obviously good baseball players to get here, but they may not even make it to the team. How do you deal with that? Well, most of the rookies in this camp will not be playing on our club, but we want to make them uh, kind of frothing at the mouth for the major league. We want them to see the major leagues. We want to see the conditions. We want, to see, want them to talk with the major league players. And we make it tough on the rookies. But uh, in the long run, when they're sent back to camp, they've got a positive attitude about baseball. If I tried out and I made it to camp and I got sent down, but I do get called up to the majors, how long is it going to be before I get a million-dollar contract? Depends on how good you are. If you can hit the ball at the ballpark uh, 20, 30 times a year, if you can uh, win 15, 16 games, it will be the next day. Is it possible to have a great season, get a multi-year multi-million-dollar contract and then just be a total washout? Is that possible? Oh, certainly, certainly. We've had a lot of guys that uh, they, they have the great year, they get the big contract, they get lazy, and uh, pretty soon uh, their next contract is uh, not near what, it, what the original one was. But, but most of the guys uh, play on pride, and uh, you don't see that too much, but uh, they need motivated, and money is a great motivator. And just one final question. Do you think my sunglasses are incredibly masculine? Not really. You're not real pleased with the Expos. Not really. They beat the Dodgers a little while ago. You don't like that? No, I'm a big Dodgers fan. Do you go to all the games? No, actually, I don't go to too many games. But you're, you're a big fan. Yes, and I've always been a big fan, no matter when they win or lose. Are you with them in the good times and the bad times, or are you one of these fans who cheers when they're winning and when they're losing? Oh! Explain oh, yourself. My name's Sylvester Stallone. You're not Stallone, you're Al. My old pal well, Al. My name's uh, Rocky. You can call me Rocky. Nice to meet you, Stan. How do you do? I heard, Ooh, sorry. He's got a grip like I Rocky. That, Maybe that he really Jeremy is. Jeremy Miller was on the show. This is Jeremy. But nice to meet you. The name's Rocky. You can call me Sylvester Stallone. Okay. Oh, that's terrible. Get off the black carpet. Get over here. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> right <laughs> Now, let's say that one more time. Yes. <laughs> I, uh, I heard you want to act with me. Is that correct? Um, no, I want to act with Sylvester Stallone. What do I look like, huh? Oh. You look like Al. Al who? Anyway, look, I brought my Linus blanket because I heard you were into that kind of stuff. So here, let's have a little fight. We'll do a fight team for the monkey. Okay, sure. That way we'll get on film, huh? Okay. Uh, we, we, can't, we can't have this kind of violence We're going to stop on this that show. right now. He's talking, huh? Excuse me. No, we, oh, we, who's going to stop me? The censor? Well, huh? We're a show with a censor. We gotta Let's put a stop on, to this. We can't go. have this no. fighting well, on the show. Al, Stal, whoever you are, do not hurt Jeremy. He's got to go back to Hollywood and be a great. Well, we're gonna go to Hollywood and make a movie. Hey. Ramble, we will be right back.
I'll let you finish the line. You notice that? Yeah. Nice to the band. Do you want to do a little tune on, on the horn? Sure. Okay, here we go. Jeremy discovered a toy uh, during the break. Yes, uh, I, I like do apologize thing. for Al, by the way. Oh, that's I all right. I apologize for Al. Now, you're involved in some issues in... Yes, I am. ...at home, as they say. What, what, yes, what is yes? Yes is a project my dad put together. It's Youth Education Superstars. It's a bunch of actors promoting uh, literacy in schools and f promoting kids to sa stay in school. Now, what kind of things would you do? Go to uh, events and stuff, um, how the, like uh, education um, conferences, guest appearances, mainly things like that. Is staying in school something important for you as an individual? Because you've got it made now. You're 12, 13 years old. You've got it made. You've got your whole future ahead of you as an actor, if, I guess, if you want it. So why don't you quit school when you're 16 and make a lot of money? No, because I'm, I'm going to college. I'm, I'm going to college. That's all there is. I am going to college. Is that your decision, or is that, that people is my pressing it upon you? That is my decision. So, so getting an education then is really important for you? Definitely, because you got to know how to read, you got to know how to write to be in this business. And uh, an education is really important to me. I mean, right now, I'm, school isn't my favorite thing, but is it any kids? Well, I don't know if anyone who I mean, loves school, but I guess it's, it's something it we all have to go through. And, and it does not bother me. It's really important. You have a whole pile of brothers. And, yeah. And uh, the question, I guess, is, is there any rivalry because you're so popular and well-known? Do, do they say... Gee, you're lucky. I wish it were me. Or is there any jealousy there? Not as far as I know. I mean, nobody has said anything. We all just pretty get, pretty much get along fine. So would you say that your home life is is pretty normal? It's an average type mm -hmm. kid's life. Definitely. Except you're a star, and you want to do a movie someday. Definitely. You want to do a movie. Well, we'll watch the Especially movie. Especially with Sylvester Stallone. Okay, Sly, if you're watching, Jeremy Miller, call us and we'll give you his number. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on something else. And thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. All right. We'll go over to the door. Join us next weekend for two more days of craziness with something else on the show called Something Else. We'll learn to juggle, to sing, and watch the airplanes fly by in the backyard of just the pen of a star, Joanne Willette. See you at 9.30 next Saturday and Sunday morning on MITV. I spelled it right. <laughs>